I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting, Monday, November the 5th, 2018, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burner. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. If you don't mind standing for the invocation by Vice Mayor Bill. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you once again in this building, Father, to do the city's business. Father, we ask you to give us the wisdom we need to conduct the business of the city and do what's best for the citizens of this great town. Father, we ask you once again to protect our military, our firefighters, and our police officers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Say our pledge now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there any action on the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Mr. Shammy. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. And it's accepted 6 0. Okay. Communications, there are none tonight. Mr. Bridge, City Manager Report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of Council, members of the public, I'd like to share with you the City Manager's Report. Under informational item, union negotiations are still underway. We have our next meeting with the administration and staff on November 16th. Uh, over the past weekend, we had a shredded community event. Um, basically, we had offered free shedding services for uh, citizens of the city, and also if you are a New Carlisle Federal uh, Banking customer, we set up shop in the back of their parking lot. Councilman uh, Ron Cobb and Bill Cook uh, joined me there. It was a, a great um, event. We did not have as many cars as we thought, so we are um, probably going to have that shredded event uh, next year at the same time as community cleanup. We partner in with that. Um, it still was a, a good de a deed, and we like to thank Mr. Cook for recommending that. But again, next year we're going to try to change the date on that. Uh, year end, keeping I, uh, administration very busy. Right now we are working on our budget, our 2019 operating budget. We are also continuing on uh, with union negotiations, as I stated earlier. Policy development and contracts. Year end for contracts is also a very busy time. Um, over, I think last week, the county had released some information regarding a critical infrastructure award that the city had won, and I would like to just spend a few seconds um, going into more with that. So today I had our service director shoot me an email uh, with, with uh, what he wanted to say with that award. Um, and basically it is, uh, Gelwood Drive will be a full death reconstruction project um, from Kennison to Brookfield. Um, the project will reconstruct 1,481 linear feet of roadway, 2,962 linear feet of new curb and gutter, 43 new driveway approaches, and three new storm system dry wells. Total project cost was about 433,000. Engineering of that 433,000 is around 19,700. Um, when it comes to construction costs, it's around 413,000. The new Carlisle Street levy will be throwing in $41,400 towards that, and the critical infrastructure will cover the rest, the grant. We'll also have to budget around $61,600 of our estimated 2019 levy revenue of the $130,000 that we do get from the project. This was a big win for the city. Um, if we would have not got this, this particular project would have been split up over two years, possibly three. We do want to uh, extend our sincere thanks to the county. Not only did we get critical infrastructure this year, we also got it last year as well. With that being said, we did not get any block grant money this year. So we got zero block grant money, but however, we did get that massive award with the critical infrastructure. So I am happy to report that. Hats off to Howard Kitko. He's the one who is working with the county to fill out the applications and also uh, knowing what projects would be best utilized with the money that we're about ready to get. Um, so it's a big win for the city. Uh, the county has always historically treated us very well, whether it be with block grant money or critical infrastructure money. So we would like to send a sincere thank you to the county as well. And you had a motion to approve um, and it is attached. Uh, the amendment to the uh, amendment number one to the 2017 state audit just to bring everyone up to speed 
A few months back, council had authorized ordinance 1821E. And what that does, it gave me permission to expend funds in excess of $25,000 for our required yearly audit that we get from the state of Ohio. And they audit our financial procedures, our bank accounts, et cetera, anything that has to do with finances. Um, in that original agreement, it stated that the costs may go up, and if the costs do go up, it'll be addressed through an amendment, which is council has in front of them tonight. The original estimated cost was 28,000, excuse me, 26,896. 26, the amended price is 28,536. It's an increase of $1,640 and it is due to additional research analysis and review and audit adjustments. Council, so I'll so move. Second. Council, any discussion on this? Who first then? Second. Oh, he's second. Oh, I, I know. He first, you second. But, um, Vice Mayor Lindsay? Oh, we have discussion first. And, uh, who was the first one? I couldn't tell Mr. which Cook. voice it was. Okay, thank you. Anything on this? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. Mr. Bridge, will you just, I get it, but will you go over what this audit is and what all it entails? Kind of in a brief little. Yeah, so we, every year we have to audit our financial records. It's from, it's required by ORC. Uh, sometimes the state auditor can audit you, which is we are in a, a four year cycle with them. And then sometimes the state releases you to, to a private auditor. But it is required every year that every municipality in the state of Ohio goes through the same exact audit that we're going through. And they look at our books, they look at our financial procedures, consider to the checks and balances for to make sure that the finance director and myself are doing the books correctly to Ohio law. Once that audit is done, council gets invited and we go over the audit results. Thank you. Good. Any other questions? No. Mrs. Burner. Okay. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. Except it's 6 0. <clears throat> Mr. Bridge, anything else? Yep. That is all I have for the all city right. manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Also, any questions for the city manager? No. No. All right, moving on. Uh, uh, comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. And state your address, please. <clears throat> Dr. Golankowski. I don't think that, uh, um, name and address, Linda Eggleston Nowakowski, 317 South Main Street. I don't think that I understate the dire situation we currently find ourselves in this city. Just focusing on the events of the last few months, I think that the people need to know what the current state of affairs is. I would like to review some recent history to make sure I am correct, correctly following what's going on. In early June, charges were levied against two council members. I believe these charges were covered by Section 4.08B of the City Charter. Um, the charges were, uh, has engaged in this conduct. After these allegations uh, were made, the council is mandated, if requested, to hold a hearing for the relevant evidence and provide the opportunity for evidence to be presented on behalf of the member, fellow members. Following such a hearing, council shall, within 30 days, vote whether to declare the member's office forfeit or vacant with five affirmative votes necessary for such declaration. That's a quote from the charter. In the middle of that dispute, no. after, these, after that, these charges were abandoned when Mr. Shammy indicated that he would not vote against either of the men. The charter requires five members to agree. Since he would not vote for the affirmation of the forfeiture of office, the vote was impossible, so the charges were withdrawn. At this time, Aaron resigned. 
The article in char the charter says that five members of councils must agree on the person engaged in misconduct. As I recall, both parties admitted to doing what they were accused of. The first point I would like someone to clarify is, how can Mr. Shammy not vote that they engaged in misconduct when they admitted it? The second issue regards the filling of the vacancy on council. The charter in addressing the filing of a, filling of a vacancy says with quite clarity what needs to be done. I could read the section here, but we've gone over that before. In any case, we are faced with the fact that we did not meet the recommendations in the charter, which were to post the vacancy, interview the applicants, vote. If the vote could not be made there within 10 days, the mayor was to announce it. We did not do that. Our charter does not have any provision after that figuring that no mayor would miss the 10 days. In the last council member, excuse me, I put this down so that I would stay within time. We are now faced with a dilemma. There is no provision in the charter for what to do when the mayor makes a mistake. When asked for some clarification, on what was happening regarding the placement, replacement of Mr. Lighty by Mr. Grimm, there was no response other than we're waiting. Later in the council meeting, Mr. Cook suggested that a citizen's charter review might be needed, but stated no reason. This was curious to me, but I suspected that it was because of the dilemma the council finds itself in because of the mayor's untimely decision making process and not knowing the mandates for announcements. He has put us in a real bind. Ohio election law mandates that municipal elections are held in odd number years. However, there's no provision in the charter to cover handling the election of a partial term council member. There's a scheduled charter review in 2021. At that time, that committee can recommend amendments to the charter to the council and may be submitted to the electors of the municipality by a two-thirds vote of the legislative authority, two-thirds of these gentlemen. And upon presenting petitions signed by 10% of the electors in the municipality. As of today, there are 33, 20, 3,327 registered voters in New Carlisle, according to the Board of Elections. This would mean that the earliest time that we could have in place a legal way to fill the vacant seat is November of 2021. All municipal elections are in odd number years, so the earliest time that would be filled is 2020. I'd like to have some clarification from you because I would hope after four weeks now you've got some information from legal counsel. All right. Yes, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Nelkowski, we did get a let we sent a letter to the Board of Elections to clarify one of their statements. They gave us three <coughs> options. And correct me if I'm wrong. The first one was they formed the opinion that I still have the ability to appoint. The second one was to have an election in May. And the third one was to have an election in uh, November of 2019. We sent a letter back to the uh, county prosecutor's office, which is the chief legal counsel for the Board of Elections, and they responded to us, and they said that he was an heir, and option one was no longer able. <coughs> However, option two and option three would be for May or November. And then we got a letter back from Lynette, if I remember correctly, stating that she would recommend November. That's what I have to my recollection. So we've been without council members for over a year? 
that would be a, uh, a question for our legal counsel to answer. I mean, this is, I'm just telling you what we were told. I mean, she is our legal counsel. She represents us. So. Can I say, Go I ahead. think that both the Board of Elections say it would be smoother if it was in November, but council can at any point in time pass a resolution to direct the Board of Elections to put it on a ballot. So I'm assuming that may be in May. Is that in there? May. Oh, yeah, if we want to do May, I mean. But I, I mean, I'm just going off the letter. I'm not saying and that's exactly Other business, I think that's something we should discuss. So, council, any comments? Mr. Cook? I think there's also a matter of the fact that if we decide, we can hold a special election. However, as I understand it, it's going to be very costly, meaning money, that I don't think we have, and that was, was the numbers something like 12,000 to 21? If it wasn't on November or May, it would be 12. I don't think it was 21, 12. So we're talking about the $12,000 to have a special election. I think the other factor was there was some mention of the Board of Elections having new voting machines. Yep. There was some discussion about the fact that if we have an election in the time frame that they were having these, it could throw off their grant. So we would also get tagged possibly for the cost of new voting machines. So there's been a lot of things that are probably going on in the background that a lot of people are not aware of. And as far as the charter review, yes, I still am in favor of a charter review as soon as possible. Not only for this portion of the charter, there are quite a few portions of the charter that needed to be taken care of. And having been on that charter review committee for a number of times, yes, we were very derelict in not bringing these to the forefront, but at that point, it was never brought up that these sections needed to be changed. When the charter review committee met, they went through that charter page by page by page. And each and every member had the right to bring up anything and everything that could be changed or would be changed it was voted on at that point. Also, there were charters from other cities that were brought into play, and we had the opportunity to go through those. This was not just a one evening or a one day session. This went on for quite some time. I, I know, but I'm giving you the background. And consequently, it's not an easy task, number one, to get people that are interested in coming to a charter review session because I'll be honest with you, it's very dry and cumbersome. But if you can get enough people, and it seems like most of the people that were involved with that charter review committee had either been on one or two times prior to the last one. The last time, I think we recommended either four or five charter reviews and amendments. Council put them on the ballot. They were turned down. Anything else? Um, are we going to just, you mentioned something about going into this maybe a little more in other business? Yeah, I think it'd be appropriate under okay. other then business I'll discuss till, the election. I'll, I'll wait till then. All right. Thank you. Mr. Cobb, do you have anything? No. All right. And Mrs. Lovanovich, you don't mind going up and saying your name and address, please? My name is Nancy Lovanovich. I live at 505 Pease. Uh, and I think a lot of the problem with uh, putting things on the ballot is once I read them, I can read them four times and I still don't understand what they're saying. Uh, and I know you and I have talked about charter review and uh, I'm more than willing to help. I, there's gotta be more than just me and you in this town that, that wanna do this. So I think we ought to try it again. and. Uh, it's very hard to understand a lot of the legalese that comes out. I mean, that section, this issue one now, this part says, yeah, it's good. This part says, no, it's, you know, and there's different parts of it and they just mish it all together. And I think we just need to make them a lot clearer. Thank you, Mr. Lobotovich. 
Any other comments? Oh, sorry. Yes, ma'am. I'll keep asking why we can't do this part of the meeting after you guys look at the amendment you want to make. Well, I don't know. That would be a good thing to discuss. <laughs> Rules of Council. Yeah, we we'll discuss that later. <coughs> Any other comments from members of the public? <coughs> Committee reports that are none tonight. Mrs. Burner. All right. We have one resolution, intro and action. Resolution 18-16R, introdu introduction, public hearing and action tonight. Approval of the Clark Waste Management District's amended draft solid waste <coughs> management plan. Mr. Cook. Mr. Mayor, I will make a motion we approve this and also a little background on this. This is a lot of times a housekeeping situation Yeah. that is done by the Clark County Solid Waste District. I have been through a number of these over the years because I am on the Solid Waste Technical Advisory Committee for Clark County. This is primarily something that needs to be approved by several identities in the county, cities, townships, etc. And I wholeheartedly am in favor of this motion. Is there a second? Second. second. I'm sorry. Mr. Bridge, would you like to explain? Or did Mr. Cook do it? I was going to defer to Mr. Cook for the explanation because he's oh. on the board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, counsel. <laughs> Hearing none, Mrs. Berner. Right. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Motion approved. <clears throat> Six to zero. <laughs> Ms. Berner, do you mind going over our ordinance? Oh. Yes. Ordinances. Tonight we have two introductions. Ordinance 18-27. Introduction tonight. Public hearing and action on 11-19-18. And ordinance amending section 248 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding city policy. And ordinance 18-28. Introduction tonight. Public hearing and action on 11 19 18 in ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an engineering agreement for the wastewater treatment plant influent building equipment replacement project and do you mind reading the other business as well other business congressman warren davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth tuesday of each month from 1 30 p.m until 2. the city offices will be closed monday november 12th for veterans day our crime watch meeting will be held November 14th, 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Right. Mr. Lowry, you said you had something. Um, just when we get into the... We're ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, on the uh, special election, I personally would just like to get it into, what was it, May? May election. I mean, even if it's going to cost us a little more, I think it's it's pretty important and it needs to get done. I mean, people are, you know, kind of anxious to get this taken care of as, 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 as am I, so that was just my two cents. Bite the bullet and get it done. Council? Do we want a motion for that? Do we, it's up to Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. I would assume I would have to make the motion to have you carry this through. Would you have to set this up, I'm assuming? This would actually go through our legal department to set it up. It would be as a, as a resolution by Council, so we'd have to. So I think what would have to happen is we'd have to have it drafted by Lynette. I draft them. There's a template we can get through Board of Elections. Okay. Is it an assessed resolution, a necessity, or proceed, or, or is that uh, something different? I'm not sure. We'll get the template, and then it's a, it's a resolution. It's a legislative process like any other piece of legislation. We okay. So it'll be introduced okay. at the next meeting at 19. Yeah, but if it's a resolution, you just need one read. Yeah, th yeah. just the one read. Yeah. So. Okay, so I make a motion to have counsel and legal counsel uh, start the process of holding a special election in May to replace the empty council seat. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this? <clears throat> nope. Oh, Mr. Bridge. Um, what did what they say the dollar amount would be? Because we're doing the 2019 budget now, and I'd like to plug this number in. I don't know how much it would cost, considering it would be on a May election, and we don't know if there will be anything on the May ballot already. But the minimum not. we got is at least 12. That was for At least 12, and, and he stated that if there was a 
possible judgeship uh, primary involved there, it could be less and maybe even nothing. What you might do is <coughs> just check with But Jason. it also could be more, too, right? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so how about I budget 20000 Well, I would say in the resolution, we just put, we ask how much it is, we just put in what he says it is, and then if it goes up, we can amend, or if it goes down, we don't have to spend it. Well, we'll be doing approving the final budget. Oh, that's correct. That's See, correct. Yeah. That's so correct. I'm playing around with the numbers now. So yeah. I'll do up to 20. Okay. That way we'll have a little bit of a cushion. Anything we don't use, it just gets rolled over. Right into, back to the general. All right. Mm -hmm. And I actually might put that under a, under, okay, I'll figure out where we're going to put it. All right. Is, there, is everyone okay with 20,000 budget? Yeah. I mean. Mr. Kyle. Correct me if I'm wrong. Corey, will they not have to go out and re Petition? It, every, I would say that when we write it, we'd write it as in the template version that it would be like any other election where they need to go get the required signatures to go face the electorate to get their petitions done. 25 valid signatures of registered voters turn into the Board of Elections. Actually, the clerk of council gets it turned in first, and then she would take it into the Board of Elections and be certified. Well, no. I'm not yeah, I'm assuming it would follow the same process of a normal election, would be my understanding, where everyone, where everyone can run, no matter if they applied or if they didn't. I would assume. Hmm? I, would assume. That's a, I mean, that's what would be my guess, just like any other election. And one in Lynette's legal opinion, did she not say that you could write the resolution to only allow the people who were around the first time around? Don't quote me. I don't remember that. Do you remember that, Mike? I, off the top of my head, I can't remember that. Yeah. It goes to anybody who wants to go for that position. That, that would okay. be my understanding of it. Sure. So. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Also, is, is the May the earliest? That, I mean, if we're paying for the special election, it couldn't be done in, say, January? I mean, theoretically, we can host it any time. But the question is, when does the count? We've got to discuss with the county with their new voting machines. Because if we were. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Cook. If we were to put it in February, it might forestall new voting machines for the whole county because they have to have a window of days prior between elections before we get voting machines. Okay. So I think they recommended May as the earliest. I think he, Jason recommended May, and basically, yes, we can do it, but I think there's going to be a lot of hoops and hurdles to get in February. to to get over if we do it anything before that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay, Vice President. The uh, council should have received the email from the law director that told us in the email, along with other things, that we should wait till November to do this because of cost, and she thought that would be the first way to do it. Uh, and the first time in five years, I agree with her <clears throat> that we should wait till November and do this in November. I think at that point you just had a vote to go ahead and do this in May. We haven't had a vote on anything. No, we're about to. We had a vote Any on other? having it Mr. drawn. Mr. Cook, Mr. Cook, Any other comments? Nope. Mrs. Berger, please okay. call her. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? No. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Motion accepted, 5-1. You seconded that. And before we, before there, further, I'm gonna pass the gavel over to Mr. Lindsay real quick, to the acting mayor. Uh, I've been speaking with Dr. Nolikowski about the uh, community garden and beekeeping. And uh, we've been emailing back and forth of what we, what she would like to see and what I would like to see for the uh, New Carlisle uh, community garden to be able to have bees. So I would like to make a motion that we allow in the city of, oh, sorry, we allow bees in the city of New Carlisle with safety signs and uh, flyaway fencing following the revised code, uh, which I will forward to the law director, which will allow it, which they will follow to have a certified beekeeper and things of that nature. So, that's my motion. I didn't hear, I didn't hear what you said. Mr. Shannon Second. seconded. Okay. I didn't hear what you said. It's to allow bees in the city of New Carlisle to be kept by individuals. Mr. Mayor. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mr. Lowry. Is it Vice Mayor now? Mayor. Mr. Acting Mayor. Sorry. 
Okay, so is this going to have to go to Lynette to have it typed up? Yes. I'm assuming? Yeah. Um, this is just like the preliminary stage of getting it written up. And then once we get something tangible, I'll continue to work with Dr. Nolikowski on something that would be beneficial to her. Okay, my thought is, my question to counsel is, and, and and if it was you as well, my thought on this is to, if possible, hold off till January, at least January 1. I don't know how much of a time crunch there is to, to get this going on your end, but just my feelings with the amount of money that council has spent on attorney fees this year, um, why add to it if there's not a necessary reason to? If, it, if it's not an issue it, with, with yeah. their project to wait till January 1. I mean, I'm all for it, don't get me wrong. That, that's just my idea. I mean, when Ramey had to come back and, and ask to add additional funds to cover attorney fees, and I know this will probably be just a few hundred bucks for her to take a look at or whatever it may be, but I just think it would just, if, if it's not an issue with her to wait till at least January. January's fine? Yeah. All right, then I will draw my motion. All right, thank you, Ms. Council, is there anything else? Hearing none, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Very good. Second. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Accepted 6 0. We are now in executive session. Now we'll take a five minute recess. Can we have a motion to go back into regular session? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Shammy. Who did the first? Me. Mr. Lindsay and then Mr. Shammy. Mr. Lowry both first. Councilman Lowry? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Always do that to you. Councilman Cook? Yes. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Uh, yes. Thank you. Do I have to do this again? Nope. We're now in regular session. Okay. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Mayor. It's fine. After um, careful consideration and looking through my notes, um, I'd like to uh, make a motion we adjourn. A second. We are adjourned. <laughs>